Hello everybody, welcome back to Creating Hanley. I'm your host Kimberly at Creating Hanley. And in today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to make this picture frame out of fabric. So, if you're into that, stay tuned. What I'm gonna do is make four of these little things. So, if you're looking for a gift for Mother's Day, Father's Day, maybe a birthday present or something that you want to whip up real quick, graduation, um, you know, any kind of like gift from the heart that means something, any person, any age, this just might be the thing. So if you don't want to do like a typical gift card or cash, check, whatever you guys give for gifts, um, if you want to make something, if you're handy, you know, if you're handy and you have a sewing machine and you want to create something, you know, you know, just like from home, um, this can be really special if you do it right. So, uh, this is also a great way to use up your scraps. If you're a sewer, quilter, whatever, um, and you have a lot of you know, scraps to, to use up, even some ribbon. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So, let's get into it. Basically, I was thinking about a gift for Mother's Day that wasn't roses or flowers or, you know, like hearts, anything like that, because not everybody has like a rosy kind of mom. Not everybody has their mother still. Um, you know, some people have are 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 not moms at all. Some people are dog moms. They're pet moms, cat moms, um, and so maybe this is like a nice little gift to give somebody just special in your life. Maybe it's your aunt, even your grandma, or you know wh whoever you want to give it to. Maybe it's your sister. Um, doesn't even have to be. A she it could be a he if you want to maybe your best mom ever was your best friend's father or something I don't know um or they so you know there's there's all kinds of moms out there right so let's do something that's a little creative and special from the heart and you can design it however you want so I'm using leftover uh, cotton fabric scraps from my quilting projects. So I just have a bunch of stuff here. So, um, and I don't think I have a flowery thing in here. I do have a, a little heart. So I do have one little heart thing right here. <laughs> All right. Now, if you look at this, so everybody has digital pictures nowadays, right? But this will fit a four by six photograph on paper, right? So a paper photograph. And so it could be like from a time that maybe, you know, you and this person went to a really special place and it, it holds meaning for both of you. Um, so, you know, whatever pictures that you wanna put in this little picture frame, and we're gonna show you how to hang it on a wall um, or they can put it wherever they want, but if you're putting paper in fabric, you probably don't want to throw it in the wash, so just know that. Okay, now I'm going to show you what I've completed already, and then I'm going to show you how I got there. So this is half of it, or maybe a third of it, because we still have to do the back too. So this is the top half. And if I get a little piece of paper, uh, I got some pretend photographs here. So if you see, uh, you there's these little corners here that are. Let me let me put this down. Little corners that are not attached to the fabric underneath. They're sewn into the seam, but they're not. They're open right here so that you can easily slide in a piece of paper or a picture 
or cardboard or whatever you want to do. And then these two are going to be sewed down as well so that these go right into place. And this holds your picture. So you can even write in a message if you want. So I'm going to do an upside down heart. <laughs> oh, that doesn't look very good. <laughs> whatever. Um, that looks terrible. That looks like a butt. I digress. So, <laughs> um, let's make this. So, I, and I just have like whatever scraps I had. I had this Spider-Man left over, but it doesn't even matter what the back or background fabric is going to be because it's going to be hidden by a picture. So, let me show you how I got here. So, let's start with this. So, you want to cut... So it depends on how many pictures you want to put in this in this collection. I'm making four, so um, that's you know that's what I'm gonna make. Um, but you can put in two. You could, you could do one. You could do like six, or you can make it like a wall hanging like long and and narrow, like two wide. If you're doing four by six, you could do five by seven. The typical. Um, photograph paper is four by six, five by seven, um, eight by 10. I think it's eight by 10, something like that. And then they just get bigger. So it's, it's really up to you how, how, what dimensions and you can even cut your own sizes. So if you have a picture that maybe you only want to have, it's four by six, maybe you want to make it, um, four by four or four by three whatever you want to do. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to cut your fabric. Well, I'm going to tell you the length, how to cut your fabric. Okay. So I'm doing four by six. All my pictures in, in my piece of paper are four by six. So this fabric right here is four and a half, four and a half by six and a half, four and a half by six and a half. And that can fit a picture this way, or it can fit a picture this way. Now, I'm pretending that all my pictures are going to be like this, okay? So, the next thing you want to do is cut a piece of, um, four pieces of fabric to make the corner pockets one inch square. So, these are tiny, one inch square. So... If you take a little measuring tool and you put your fabric right up to there, that is one inch. Super tiny, right? So in quilting speak, we call that postage stamp because it's really small. You can make it a little bit bigger if you want, one and a half. Two, two is going to be big, but you can make it one and a half if you wanted to. Anyway, one inch, one inch square. Now you're gonna fold that in half, in diagonal. You're gonna fold it in half and add a diagonal. Okay, and then you're gonna put that right up against the corner edge. Make sure that lines up, okay? Just like that. So you do that four times. Now you wanna make sure there's a little pocket here, right? Cause you don't wanna sew that down. Now, how do you hold this in place? Well, you can hold it in place with a, with a pin and now that becomes cumbersome. So I could put pins in here, all along here, but it becomes very cumbersome. And when I go to sew, I have to pull out the pins anyway. And you know, it can work if you're very careful cause you really have to be careful that this little corner does not move. So when you pull your pins out, you have to make sure that you go super slow in order for the fabric not to move. We're gonna have another layer on top of here, so you have to be super duper careful, okay? So that's one way. Um, another way is that you can apply clips. If you have, I just have like these paper clippy kind of thingies, you could put those in place and make sure that catches everything. And that will be fine for now. And, um, you know, Again, look how super big and bulky and, and weighty that is. So that is up to you if you want to use something like that. Now, if you sew and you have Wonder Clips, fantastic. Now, another way I'm going to show you is just with glue. I just have this glue stick here. Now, you don't want to use a lot because this needs to be open. So you're just going to put like a little, see that little shiny dot there? Just a little shiny dot. 
and then you're going to line that up right there. Now, yes, you might be thinking, well, you just glued that fabric down. When I iron that, that glue is going to dry up and I'm going to be able to lift that up with my finger before um, I'm able to slide in a piece of paper, okay? So don't worry about that. You just don't want to put a whole lot of glue on there. Just enough to make it stick in place so that when you move this fabric around, it doesn't fall off, okay? So that is what we are going to do. And I did that to all four of these little um, one-inch square patches. Now... I make four of these, okay? So once you do the, the number that you want to make, make it all, make them all right to this, you know, however you want to do it, make them. Make all these right now. Now, as you can see in this example here, I added a sashing. So a sashing on the outside and a sashing on the center. Now the sashing I used is only one inch wide so it's only one inch wide so everything I do I'm using one quarter inch seam allowance so everything on the back is a quarter inch seam allowance okay now I iron these to the inside you don't have to but it just adds I think it's just a little bit better that way it's not necessary but a quarter inch seam allowance a quarter inch seam allowance a quarter inch seam allowance everything is a quarter inch seam allowance okay so once you know that that's gonna happen now you know if you cut a half an inch whatever fabric you're using whatever design or pattern or size you want to cut inch you want to cut a half inch larger so that the size you want shows and the half inch is eaten up in the seam allowance Okay, so a quarter inch here, a quarter inch here. That's half an inch, right? And it's going to be a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here, and that's also half an inch. So the size that you want, I want four by six. So I make my my squares four and a half by six and a half. If you're using a, a quarter inch seam allowance, okay? Got it? Good. So I'm making four of these and I'm gonna put it in this little pattern like this now I have this one here with my spider-man so I'm just like I said I'm just using scrap um, yeah the next thing you want to do is once you get these done all four of these you're gonna add some sashing so what I did here is ignore this for now is I added sashing in the middle so if I take my Spidey, I added two sashings, one on each side of this. Only do that to one because this one attaches to this one. So I don't need a sashing here because I'm now going to place that face side down with my corners. So you want to make sure the corners are tucked underneath. These are free. That's why if you're using a pin, you want to make sure that you're not stabbing your fingers. Okay, you're going to line that up so everything is squared up. Now this square or rectangle is shorter than this one because this one now has two sashings. So that makes this rectangle a little bit longer. So when you flip the other one on top of that, it's this one's going to be shorter than this one. That is normal. Okay, let me get this one out of the way. Now I'm going to line up this edge and I'm going to line up these edges. They should, if I measured correctly, they should square up. Now I know this one is a little bit off. Now I made a marker, really, really thick marker, so I could see where I'm going to sew. So this one is probably not the best example because it's not perfectly square. But I will show you, when you look at these little squares, they must overhang all your sew line. Do you see how they overhang the sew line? Because I need to catch this raw edge into the seam in order to, to lock it in place. Same with here. I have to make sure that this raw edge is caught in the seam. So my sew line is going to be right along this thick um, marker line that I drew. Okay? Now, also, I drew that thick marker line so that I could see it through the back. 
This is a very vibrant print. So when I switch it over to the back, I can still see that faint marker line. That is the line I want to sew on. So you can see this piece of fabric is not square. It's a little bit wonky right along here. So I want to make sure that my other fabric that I use will line up on the straight line. Not on the straight line, but it needs to be square to that. If that if that is making sense now, of course I picked something difficult for you guys, right? Um, but what I'm gonna do actually is take this one face up, and then I'm gonna take this one face down, and I'm going to put this. So if I look at it this way, I want this to be on the right and this to be on my left, my my right and my left. It's your it's opposite for you. So I'm going to. How do I want to do this? I want to sew it from, so you could see this sashing, I already sewed in the little tabs right here, right? But I want to keep those down. Make sure once you do your sashing, keep those down. So you know what? Let's do an example. Let's do an example right here for that. So I'm going to take my sashing on this side and actually i'm going to use this one i'm going to use this one is that right it's a little short but that might be okay all right so i'm going to take this one and what i do is i place this get this out of the way for now i'm going to place my sashing face side down catching see this one's a little bit short how did i screw that up Okay, I don't know, but I'm going to use it anyway. So I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance. It, the seam allowance is, is barely going to catch, catch this, but it will. So we'll be okay. Um, at least I'll be okay. I wouldn't recommend for you to do that, but I'm going to, I'm going to do it. <laughs> now this, so this edge is lined up, this edge is lined up and this edge is lined up. I'm going to take it to the machine. Now you can see if you had pins in here, it would be really difficult. So, and also if these little triangles were not um, anchored down somehow, now you can baste them if you, if you wanted to, if you are, you know, typical sewers like to baste and then they take out that basting stitch and then they just use the regular stitch. I'm not going to do that because it's an extra step that I don't want to do. So I'm gonna add this sashing right here and I'm just gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. Start right at the top here. Let's bring this around for you. Starting right at the top right there. And then I'm not gonna backstitch because it's gonna get locked into another sash. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident with that. All right, now I take it out and then when I open this up, and it reveals, now these two little tabs can pop up too. Now they're glued down, but it, but if I lift them up, gently peel them up, peel off, peel the glue off, and you can tell that there's a little bit of glue, but it's dried. So you wanna make sure that the sash just opens and these tabs stay down. So if you iron this, take it over to a hot iron, not steam, just a regular hot iron on cotton setting. Take it over to your, here we go, ironing board right there. Hot iron, no steam, don't touch it, but just place that flat down. So the tabs should stay down on the bottom fabric and the sash, you just wanna fold back, kinda roll that back where the stitching line is and then just place your hot iron down and let that iron that flat into place, okay? So now it looks like that, and here is the back seam. It's a quarter inch. And you can tell in the back, everything is caught. All the fabric is caught. So these little tabs are now locked in. So I don't have to worry about the glue anymore. I don't have to worry about the pins or the clips or whatever, because it is now locked into place. Okay, now let's add this to the Spidey. So 
I don't need another sash on the center of this one because I'm going to attach it to the Spidey, Spider-Man, okay? So, I just want to make sure that I line up these. Everything is in the places that it should be. Line this up with the edge right here of this sash, okay? Now this goes straight across. Now this is a little bit longer because we added the sash to this bottom piece or the top or the left part, okay? So you have to make sure everything is flat and laying straight. And because I drew a really thick line, I know what line I'm going to sew on. So I wanna make sure that I'm lining up my bottom my other piece in the same line. I think this will be okay. This may turn out a little bit wonky, but but we should be okay. I don't know, we're gonna see. All right, so now the next thing I'm gonna do, because I'm attaching these two together, all I'm doing is sewing on the side, so I'm creating a bigger, bigger space. So we're gonna see if this is gonna work. I might have screwed this up, but if I line up my little patches, and if I line up this, we should be okay. So again, quarter inch seam allowance. I don't need to back stitch because I'm gonna lock that down with a top and a bottom sash. And then cut your thread and voila. Now we've created two sides. Now see how these little tabs stick up? That's fine, you just wanna flatten those down. Again, I'm gonna go to the iron. I'm gonna iron these down to make sure that they stay on their respective sides. And I'm also going to iron the seam allowance to the inside. You can, you can do your seam allowance to the outside if you like, that's fine. I'm just gonna press it in. I think it looks a little bit neater, more tidy, but it's up to you, so. Seam allowance goes to the inside right there, and then that automatically puts those in the right place. Okay, super. Now I think we were able to line that up perfectly. I think we're gonna be good here. I think that's gonna work. All right, so another tip is if you think you're gonna mess up a little bit, you can make your squares a little bit bigger. So they don't have to be super small like I did mine at one inch. You can make it one and a half, you can make it even two inches. It's gonna be a much bigger square. This one is two and a half inch. Here's a two and a half inch square right here. I did the same thing, folded it on the diagonal lengthwise, and then you could put that in here and you could see how much bigger that is compared to this little one. It's so much bigger compared to this one, right? If you look at the difference, it will definitely catch the corners of your photograph. So it's up to you, however you want to make yours, but it also minimizes the amount of space that you see, which might be fine. Maybe it's just a picture of, you know, a photo, uh, well, yeah, a photograph, but like, you know, a picture of a face or, or somebody, puppy or dog, you know, cat, whatever. Um, the Eiffel Tower, whatever works, okay? So that's that. Now, now that we have this part done and we have the this part done, we're gonna put the two pieces together. So kind of something like this, right? Now we need to add a sash in here, so we're gonna do that exactly the same way. Now all I did was add a sash at the top so far for this one, and like I said, I'm just ha I just have scrap fabric, so it's just hodgepodge. You don't have to make it so scrappy. You can make it uniform. You can make it look nicer if you want to for that special person, which I would probably recommend doing. <laughs> okay, now for here, let's see, what do I have? Oh, I have this blue polka dot fabric, I'm just gonna use that. So again, same thing. I'm going to place this face side down on this portion right here, on this line. Line these up. Make sure all your little tabs are down and flat. All the tabs are down and flat, not distorted, 
down and flat. Now, if you wanted to throw in some pins, you can. I would probably throw in one in the middle right here just to make sure this big, long uh, fabric doesn't shift. The strip of fabric doesn't shift, okay? Uh, let's see, I'm gonna realign this a little bit better. I know I could do a better job. Here we go. So let's do this. Yeah, that's better. You can throw one in at the bottom if you want to. So everything's gonna be a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna throw this in right here. Throw in your pin, you can do your wonder clips. I'm gonna get this one out of the way. Take this to the machine. Make sure you line up all the edges perfectly. And I'm gonna start right here with my quarter inch seam allowance. Just making sure this is in the right place. Okay, quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm just gonna follow the edge of this strip fabric right here. And you can take it a little bit slower like I am, or you can speed it up as such. Now, when you ever you get to a pin, you need to stop because if you take your needle over a pin, you can break your needle and that's not gonna be good for you. So why am I showing? There we go, that's a better. So you wanna take the pin out. And then just with your fingers, just kind of hold that fabric in place as you go down. And then again, take out the other pin before you get there. And if you go any over any thick spots, you can slow your machine a little bit. And just look at the back. Make sure every fabric, every piece of fabric is caught under that seam, under that um, line you just sewed. So I know it's fine on here, but if I roll this up, this reveals the little pockets. See that? It reveals the pockets. Nice. Good job, guys. That's fantastic. Now, iron this open so this lays flat, or you can finger press it if you don't have a hot iron all ready to go. You can finger press that, and that usually lays pretty flat. Okay? Now, we're gonna add the second part that we just did. Where did I throw it? Right here, Spidey. So we're gonna add Spidey. Now, these sides are already locked in, right? These sides are already locked in. All we wanna do is lock in the top and the bottom. So if I wanna make it this way, I'm gonna add, push this back. I'm gonna add Spidey right here, just like so. Okay, now you kind of want to align up. Well, you definitely want to align up this line. You want to make this as straight as possible. You want to make this as straight as possible and this as straight as possible. So if you did your cutting and sewing right, everything should come out pretty much the same. I mean, there might be slight variation, but it should be the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over. We're going to flip the bottom onto the top and if you have any extra strings that you want to get out of the way, you can trim those off. Now, I am going to take a look at, here, I'll flip it around. I'm going to take a look at this strip down here. Does this one match up with this? For the most part, it does. It looks like this one's a little bit wider than this one. So I may have done a seam allowance a little bit off. Um, so, but still it lines up in the straight line. Now, if I look at this, if I peel this back, just straight back, does this line up with this? Yep, for the most part it does. I'm gonna shift it just a little bit. There we go. So you can see the orange, my orange sashing is a little bit wider than my pink, just like a thread or two wider, okay? So I know that this is in the right line. And then when I, spring that back. I want to make sure that this stays in the same place. Okay. So we're going to line up this edge with the sash. And then when I peel this back, does this line up with this? And yes, it does. So I know that this center line lines up. That's probably the most important part. So I'm going to pop a pin right in here, being careful not to shift it. Okay, if you want to, you can add a pin up here so that the fabric stays in place all, you know, pretty, pretty tight. And then all you have to do is just open this up on the sides and it should basically just fall in place. Okay, 
So you can double check that though. All right. So when you line up this, line this sashing with this sashing, it's probably better if you look at it from the side. Does that line up? And I think it does. Okay, so I'm going to add a pin right here to make sure that doesn't shift. Now, is it absolutely perfect? No. Does yours have to be absolutely perfect? I guess it depends on you and the person that you're giving it to. So I can see if I pull this back, this line, this perp, um, pink lines up with the orange. You got, You guys can see that, right? This pink lines up with the orange. The more I pull this back, the more that still is the case the whole way down. So I know that is in alignment. So I want to start right there and then I'm just going to do my quarter inch seam allowance right here. Now I drew this line pretty thick. So I know this is the line that I want to sew on. Okay. So I'm going to take it over to the machine and I'm going to start right off the edge of or maybe like right at the edge of the um, sashing. You can go a little bit slower and then just follow that line. That If you drew a line, just follow that line or just follow your quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm coming up to a pin, so I wanna stop, pause a little bit, be very gentle when you pull this pin out that the fabric does not shift, okay? And then go over all that bulky fabric and then continue on your quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna push this camera back a little bit, but you guys can still see. Now I'm gonna come down to this pin. So I wanna be careful that I don't run over that one. So I'm pressing my finger down, holding that fabric in place, gently removing the pin and continue on until you sew off the fabric and then you can cut your fabric and open it up. And let's see what we've done. Remove this pin in the center and let's see how this looks. Hey, hey, it looks pretty good. Check it out. So here we are right at this stage. Now, I will iron this. And it does look a little bit wonky, but if I bring the camera over here and you can see, I'm just gonna iron this side down and this side over. So I'm ironing the seam allowances to the center. Same with this side. It does look a little bit wonky, which just means that um, I didn't sew it or cut it exactly square. But if you look at it, it looks pretty good and it creates this little diamond in the center here. Okay, now what we want to do is add a bottom sash and then you can either add an extra side sash. So I would trim up if there's anything that's, you know, overhang, I would trim that up and then we're gonna add a back to this. So I know it's getting a little bit long for this video, but I wanna show you how to add the back. It's, there's two ways to do that so that the person, the recipient can hang this on a wall if they like, okay? So let's add the bottom sash and it's the same as we've been doing so far. So just get whatever, I'm just gonna use the same Christmas, it's actually Christmas. <laughs> um, so it doesn't even matter. If you wanna make a theme, do I see a cat right here? Did a cat go up there? <laughs> it's my Sabrina. She's so funny. All right, so if you wanted to make a theme, like for Mother's Day, if you really did wanna get into Mother's Day and when whatever mom likes, um, you know, go with that theme. Or you could do it for holiday, Christmas, St. Patrick's Day, you know, whatever works for you guys. Um, so. Line this up. Now remember, this one's a little bit wonky because the line is not, the this line is square. This fabric cut is a little bit wonky. So I just wanna make sure that I get enough fabric that will overhang that black line. And then it should go all the way straight to the other side. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over. Now remember, these pieces should be flat down, okay? So your um, little picture catchers should be 
flat down. Now, if you want to, when you flip it over, your fabric might shift. So I'm gonna pop in a pin. Now, because this is gonna be down, you wanna make sure that your pin sticks out, okay? So I'm gonna flip this over and I am, so this is actually gonna be a little bit more difficult because I really wanted to sew right along this line first, but it's going to be a little bit weird. It's gonna get a little bit weird. So let's see if I can do this right. So I'm just gonna start at a quarter inch and we'll see where this goes, okay? So let me shift you back and see if you can see the bigger picture here. All right, so I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance catching that bottom picture tag or hanger or whatever you want to call it. Now, I'm coming up on all this bulky fabric and a pin. So I remove the pin. I'm going to go a little bit slower over this bulky fabric, making sure my seam allowances are the same way. Now, when I come to this drawn line, I want to make sure that my needle is in the same place is my drawn line and it looks like I did a pretty good job of that so I'm just going to continue on and I met that up pretty well I'm actually a little surprised about that okay and just continue on the line keeping the sashing and the fabric in the right place so completely off so I sew completely off the edge can't even see that so completely off the edge cut my thread with a machine or however you do that and then make sure that you look on the back is all the fabric caught in place yes now you can see where i started up here i used a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down and that actually met up pretty well with that line which i'm a little surprised about but it worked out fantastic okay now i slowly roll this back you don't want to push it too hard but just kind of gently roll that back and then finger press it open if you have your hot iron on go ahead and use that but now you can see these picture pockets are locked into place fabulous i'm going to come over to the hot iron and just iron that in place you do not need to swirl your iron around. You just really just need to pl place it down. Okay, and here's what we have so far. Looking pretty good. Now, if you take a imaginary picture and just test it out, and so you put your picture in the square, and if you find that it doesn't work, um, maybe you just need to trim up. Well, the only thing you can do is trim up unless you want to, you know, trim up your picture, unless you want to create a whole new, um, square, but this works out pretty well. Just kind of smooth it in there and boom, there you go. Look at that folks. Hey, we're getting there. And so now I can put four pictures in my little picture hanger. Now, remember this background fabric, they're not going to see. So you can basically use whatever background fabric you want. Like Spidey, never gonna see Spidey. Unless they really like Spidey and they don't put a picture in here. But what they will see is the sashing and these little triangles, okay? So make sure that the fabric that you use for the backing is maybe not the best fabric, um, but the other fabric that, that they will see is probably the best fabric or a fabric that they will be drawn to. Okay, so now you can see on the edges here, these need trim, this is too much. So you can just trim that off with some fabric scissors if you have it and just trim that off, fabric scissors. That can go in your scrap pile or in the trash, what, however you do that. And same thing over here, just trim that off, okay. Now, if you have a rotary cutter and you know how to use that, you just use your straight edge. So get yourself a straight edge, something like this, and then zip, zip that across, okay? I'm not gonna do it on this um, acrylic because it'll mar my acrylic. So you wanna take it to a cutting surface, such as this mat right here, and you can line up 
this whole edge. In fact, if you have something longer like this, you let me bring this a little bit closer for you so you can see that. There we go. Sorry about the um, jo uh, jostling of it. So you can see this edge whole, lines up the whole edge and then you just trim off right there. And now you know that this is squared up. So I am going to add another sash on the sides just to make it a little bit thicker because the bottom is so um, thick too. And then we're gonna add a back and I'm gonna show you two ways to add hangers to this, okay? So, um, the sash I'm going to use on the side, I think I just picked this black. Uh, it doesn't have to be black, it could be whatever you want. So this one's a really long, you can see this is a long. So I'm just going to add this all the way from one end to the other. And I'm just going to iron this real quick so it lays flat. And... You can overhang it a little bit on both sides so that it's not like super tight up against the edge. Gives you a little bit of wiggle room so that you can trim it off. So again, right here, you can see, I'm just going to give it a little extra wiggle room so I can trim that off later. Now, I'm gonna realign this and this one has a lot of extra threads hanging around. So realign this, making sure that this edge and the bottom edge line up. Now, if you're doing it this way, these seams are might get caught on your plate here. So make sure that when you go over these, you're very careful about that. If they flip up the wrong way, you know, it probably doesn't matter too much, but if you want your seams to go in a certain direction, then, you know, just keep everything right. Like this, I wanted my seams to go in the middle. So this one right here will probably get flipped up. So I want to be careful when I take this through the machine. Now, for those of you who sew, this is not new. Um, if you are new to sewing, then this is um, just something that we have to consider when we start you know a project so this I'm just going to add a pin in because this is a little bit longer and it can easily get off um line no, offline basically okay so I'm going to pop a pin in here and that Okay, so I'm gonna take this over and we're just gonna do another quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so I'm gonna start this. Now I started, oops, you don't even see that. Now I started, I'm just gonna stop my needle right here. I'm gonna take this back a little bit. I'm gonna gently pull my pin out again. I wanna make sure that I align all this fabric up the way I need it to. Now this seam goes this way. It could easily flip and go the other way, so I'm just gonna be careful about that. Put my finger right there to make sure it stays in place, okay? Now I know those little, um, I know these are already locked in, so I don't have to worry about those. The little fabric, um, or I'm sorry, the picture tags, the picture hangers, okay? All right, just make sure that everything is lined up using a quarter inch seam allowance. There we go. I'm gonna speed this up just a little bit. I don't wanna to go too crazy, but I don't wanna waste your time either. Okay, so we're coming up on the edge here. Yep, almost caught my finger. All right, here we go. Great. So you want to sew off the edge and again, roll that back. And now you've created another um, sash, another border. So basically it's, an, it's a border. So you're bordering around the whole thing, okay? That's basically what that is. It's not necessarily a sash, it's a border. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So it goes from one end all the way to the other. Okay, same thing. I'm gonna add this fabric, same color. It doesn't have to be, 
but I choose the same. And again, it could be super scrappy or it could be a theme, whatever works for you. Okay, same thing here. Now I'm not gonna pin just to save time. You guys already saw that. So I'm just gonna zip through here, maybe a little bit quicker, but I wanna stop periodically to make sure my fabric uh, stays in the line that I want it to stay in. I'm gonna use my fingers to keep those seams down. Right in here, it's gonna get a little bulky because there's a bunch of seams. And keep going. And I'm gonna use my fingers to keep the seams down right here. There we go. Awesome. And this should do it. So make sure on the back that every all the fabric is caught on the back and then flip that up. There we go. Okay. Pull out any extra extraneous threads that are just kind of mucking up stuff. And then there you go. All right, now we're gonna trim this at the top. Okay. And, um, yeah, so I'm gonna trim this at the top. I'm just gonna make sure I go in the same line. It's uh, good. And um, anything else that you wanna trim up, I'm just gonna leave it. The stuff at the bottom, you know what, it's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be lost in the seam allowance. Nobody's going to know. Now we need to put on a back. So before we do that, we want to make sure that we add more of these little pockets so that when your recipient gets this, it can hang on a wall, right? So we have to do these same things, these little pockets on the back of this. So what we have to do then is get bigger ones so this is two and a half remember in the beginning this is a two and a half inch square get your two and a half inch square or you could do three inch square but you want them to be a little bit bigger because what we're going to do is put in dowel rod we're going to put in some kind of a, a rod a dowel rod would be best but get two of those you really only need two and then you're going to place those in the same manner as you did your other one as your other ones so same thing here line it up this way take it all the way out to the edge line it up there if you want to pop a pin in great again pins are um, a little bit bulky I'm gonna have to take this out because this is is gonna be in the way and this part definitely is gonna be in the way okay so I'm gonna take this out to this side as well. I'm gonna line up this edge. I'm gonna line up this edge. And you know what? I have my glue right here. I'm just gonna use that, just a little bit of glue. Use that, just a little dot and line up those edges, okay? There we go. And so, you know what? I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna line up this, just a little dot of glue line it up here and we're going to do the exact same thing okay now you think that's on the front yes i know now the other thing we're going to do is add a ribbon i just found this blue ribbon um from a gift or something i don't know i just have this little this little bit so i'm going to add maybe like a little a little loop right here just a tiny loop, it doesn't have to be very big. So let's see, maybe like that. So let's do, let's cut this right here. Doesn't have to be very long, kind of short. And then when you add this loop, make sure it is flat. So I'm going to line it up. So here's a nice center line that you've already automatically created. So I'm gonna line this up. Uh, let's do this. Put these together <laughs> and then add that right there. Make sure that the edges overhang. You definitely want the edges to overhang on this, okay? And you can pop a pin in here because this is, um, It's if you put a pin up here, it's not going to be in the way of the seam allowance of the needle. Okay, 
So let's get this right. I want to make sure. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up this with this line. So I want to make sure that I get that pretty level. Okay. So now I'm going to put my pin all the way back here. All right. Just like that. Because we're going to sew along here. So you want to make sure that this is not in the way of the needle at all. Okay. There you go. Now, what you want to do is measure this. So I have this 18 inch rule and this, if I measure from side to side, this comes out to 15 and three quarter inches. I don't know if you can see that 15 and three quarter inches. I'm going to measure in three different places down at the bottom, 15 and three quarter and at the top, oh, 15 and a half. So somewhere along the way, it got a little narrow. Okay. So I'm just going to say it's 15 and a half. And then I'm going to side and go the other way and say this is 13 and a quarter. This is 13 and a quarter. And this is 13 and a half. All right. So again, somewhere along the way, it got a little wonky. So I'm going to make this back piece a little bit bigger than 13 and a quarter or yeah, 13 and a quarter by 15 and a half. So if you need to write that down, write that down. Now I have this fabric that I found at a thrift store. It looks like somebody tried to make a shirt with it. Here's the head hole and the armhole and it does look like somebody tried to make a shirt <laughs> just a like a bag type shirt looks like a pillowcase shirt basically at, at first I thought it was a pillowcase but then I saw the holes at the top and no it's a it's a shirt so I am just going to use this fabric as the backing actually it smells like perfume or something too so I can see that this will definitely be enough fabric for this to cover the back of this. So what I'm going to do is take it over to the cutting mat and move my stuff out of the way. Okay, clear your surface and then Take, whoops, take your backing fabric and lay it flat. Take your backing fabric and lay it flat. If you need to iron it out, feel free to iron it out. You know what? I'm going to use this side. And then what I'm going to do is lay this piece on top of it. This will make measuring and cutting so much easier. I guarantee you. Now you're going to be happy that this was glued down and these are already in place in with your pins. So I already know that there's two la layers to this, but that's okay. I'm just going to cut through both layers and I'm going to use my rotary blade and I'm going to try to get all this stuff out of the way so you can see a little bit better. I'm going to bring this up closer and I'm going to bring this closer. Sorry for the craziness there. Now I'm going to use my straight edge and I'm just going to cut straight across. So follow the, the fabric line. This makes it really easy. Just follow the line of the fabric. Don't cut on your project fabric. Just cut right to the edge of it and there you go. And that can go away. And then this side too. Now I'm right handed so I need to walk around my project and go to the other side and line this up with the edge. And you can actually trim away some of that excess fabric that's hanging out over the edge also. And I'm just going to go straight across. Now 
I'm going to go to one side because I'm right-handed. I'll start on this side and I can move this out of the way and square up everything. And I'm cutting straight through all those layers of fabric. Well, two, and this is pretty thin. Now I wanna do the same thing to this side. So just get this fabric out of the way and line this up. And it looks like I'm actually gonna clean up the edge a little bit here too, which probably was why I was getting a wonky reading. And square that up. All right, and there we go. Now, I know the back and oops, I just took that out. I'm so sorry. I did not mean to do that. Um, I gotta put that back in place. Okay. I just kind of screwed that up. I'm so sorry. All right. Now. Because I know I cut through two layers of fabric, now I have two of the exact same things. You can just not use one of them, okay? So I'm gonna use this piece, and now I know that this is all ready to go, and I'm going to, um, so if it's kind of wrinkly like this, you can iron it. I'm just going to iron it real quick, although it looks like my iron shut off, so it's probably not super hot right at the moment. But you can just kind of iron it out, flatten it out. Now, the pin's going to be stuck inside here. You want everything, so you want to put right sides together. So we're making like a pillowcase. It's going to be a pillowcase type of deal. Okay, now... Be very careful with that pin that you don't stab your fingers. Now I'm going to start at the top. I know the pin's here. So the um, uh, pull holder or the, the rod or the hanger is here. The ribbon is here and that's over here. So I'm just going to place this a little bit better because I just screwed up and I took that pin out so that was that wasn't very good all right that's not working so what I'm gonna do is find my glue oh I think it fell to the floor just take a little dab of glue teeny tiny little bit make sure it's in a line with that center overhang the edges just a little bit okay and hopefully that'll stay in place now if you want to you can add a few pins just to keep everything in place because now this is a bigger project. Now, on one end, you're gonna wanna keep the, the side open. So I think I'm gonna keep this side open. So I'm going to mark it. I wanna keep a little hole open. Usually you want to do that at the bottom, but the bottom is white and this part is black. So I'm just going to keep from here to here open. It's like three, four inches maybe so that we can turn it inside out. Okay, so I'm going to start here and so all the way around and then stop here. Okay, so let's take this over to the machine. And I know this is a, a long, kind of a lengthy um, tutorial, but I'm showing you step-by-step step how to do this. Okay, so let's take it over to the machine. Let's start at this bottom pin, and I'm going to use a quarter-inch seam allowance. Now, I'm going to backstitch definitely here, okay? And you don't have to go so fast, maybe a medium speed. 
quarter inch seam allowance. Keep your needle in the fabric. Lift your presser foot. Spin this around quarter inch right there at your presser foot mark. Open up your fabric and again, straight down. Quarter inch seam allowance. Keep going all the way, making sure the bottom and the top fabrics meet. And here we go. Quarter inch seam allowance here on the other side. I'm gonna speed it up just a little bit. Try to make it as straight as possible, making sure all fabrics meet. And now I'm coming up to where my um, holder is. Make sure that is caught in the seam allowance. Okay, the ribbon is right here. So hopefully that is caught in the seam allowance. And come up to the edge. Remember when you remove the pins, do it carefully. The holder, the other holder is right here. Come to the edge, quarter inch, seam allowance. Spin, keep your needle down, spin it. And then we're coming up to the edge where our other pin is. I'm going to stop, pull that pin out, and then I'm gonna back stitch a little bit, forward, back stitch, okay? Just to lock that thread. Now I'm gonna cut the thread, just like that. Cut the thread. Now, you wanna open this up where the hole is, and then you're going to turn it right side out. Now, if you can fit your whole hand in there, that's fantastic. Um, just be very careful that you do not rip any fabric, that you do not rip the, any threads. Okay, so be gentle. And then if you have a pencil um, eraser or a pen or something, if you don't have one of the, um, was it quilting turners? I think it's called the purple thing or, you know, uh, a, um, uh, chopstick or something along those lines but you want to get something with a little bit of a point not um not super pointy that you stab through your fabric but you just want to create this corner here and the other thing that you can do if you really wanted to be savvy about it is in your corners you can so your corner here you can snip now don't snip the fat, the thread. You just wanna snip above the thread, just like that. And that will clear this much fabric so that you can have a sharper point so it's not dull. So in fact, if you really wanted to be good about that and savvy, you can snip all those corners before you turn it inside out. Otherwise, if you forget, you can just go back like I am and snip the corner again not through that sew thread not through that through that line you want to keep that intact because otherwise you're just creating a hole in the project that you just created okay now same thing here if you really want it to be savvy trim if not just turn it inside out and it'll be fine okay Where's the corner? But since I did one, I should probably do them all. And then you can take your, not the pointy part, but maybe the eraser and poke out the corners like so. You just want to ma make sure that you don't point, whatever you have um, sharp, you know, you don't want to punch it through the fabric because then you've just created a hole in the project that you spent so much time doing. Okay, creating. All right, and then poke that out. And then the, the fourth one, almost done. And now we have to do one more stitch all the way around. And then let me show you the magic that happens here. 
Okay. So. Extra thread that I don't need. Now, check it out. This is on this side, but if you flip it to the back, <gasps> check it out. If you flip those around to the back, now you've created a hanger where you can put a rod straight through. So I don't have one, but if you put mm, like, you know, something, a rod straight through, then from this side to this side, so you wanna make sure you cut it right, that could hang. Boop, you put this on a picture hanger and then this hangs. Or you can use but I would still do something like maybe put cardboard in here. If you're, if you're not going to put a dowel rod, put cardboard, something that will stabilize this. And then you can use your ribbon to hang it on a pin because otherwise it's going to look like this. And that's not going to work. You could do two um, ribbons, one on each corner, and then hang it up on nails or whatever that way too. Okay. Now we have one more step to do. One more step. We're almost done because we still have this hole to close. Now, if you have your dry iron on, go ahead and take this over to the dry iron. Make sure that you align the front and the back so that that seam is on the top. Now, when you come to this part, you want to roll those raw edges in and make, and kind of like pull it tight a little bit so that it is flat and then take it over to your iron and crease it so that you create um, an edge, a sharp edge where then, then you can sew right on top of that. Now, uh, thread color can make a difference here too. I just have cream. You can use whatever color that coordinates or contrasts or you know, works with your, I don't even know why I'm using the iron, it's off. Um, so whatever thread that works with your, with your project. There we go. Now, I'm going to find this edge and I'm going to start there, okay? So that I know it is sealed and good, <laughs> strong, okay? So I'm going to... This um, this backing fabric that I use is really, really thin. It's a different type. It's really, I guess, shirting material. They were trying to make a shirt out of it. But um, it's becoming problematic because it's a different type of fabric. So I'm going to start right here so I know that that is locked down. Okay, let's take it to the machine. So I know, and again, iron to create a crease. And you want to make sure that those raw edges are turned inside so that none of those raw edges are showing. And use whatever coordinating fabric or uh, thread that you want. Like I said, I just have cream, so it's just going to be that color. Um, and then do a stitch really close to the outside, super close. You can back stitch a few times to lock it in. And then I'm just going to follow as close as I can to the edge, keeping both layers of fabric under the needle, which I kind of missed a little bit there. Take it to the corner. Oh, this goes at an angle a little bit. All right, so all the way around. And again, I'm missing a little bit here. Here we go. So you can hear <laughs> that I'm punching, that this needle is punching through some thicker fabric. Okay. line up everything and then because you ironed it and created oh you guys can't even see that i am so sorry here we go because you lined up everything and you ironed it and created a crease you know that uh you can follow a straight line super close to the edge if you wanted to you could do now I am super, super close to the edge, but you could do like an eighth inch 
Or you could even do quarter inch seam allowance if you really, or, you know, but you can tell I am like right on the edge there, super close. In fact, that is too close. I should really be in. I could create two lines also. So yeah, you can hear that needle punching through this, this thick fabric. Now, when you come up to your um, loop, make sure it is out of the way and not inadvertently caught in the front or the back. You wanna make sure it is flat. So, that it is also going to be, again, caught in that seam allowance. And so it is super strong. Not that it's very heavy project because it's just holding pictures. So a little bit of paper, maybe some cardboard, whatever photo, photographic paper that you're using. Or you can put pictures in there, whatever works for you. Okay, now I'm back to the beginning. Now I can backstitch a little bit. And our project is now done. Our project is done, folks. There we go. We made it. So we have the back with the um, rod holder in the back here so you can hang it um, or put your cardboard in just put a little strip so it, it stays rigid and then you can also hang it this way um, and put in your four pictures all right so where's my picture throw in your picture right here this is a super long video right there so do that four times and then boom there's your gift all right folks i hope you have fun making this why does that look a little bit off yeah iron it get a nice hot iron and, and iron everything nice and flat all right folks have fun happy whatever day <laughs> happy happy picture day all right we'll see you on the next video bye for now